Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Cozy Christmas Podcast. My name is Art and I'm your host today and uh, you just caught me rocking around the Christmas tree. (laughs) I am having a great Christmas season this year. I hope you are too. And I'm really excited about our guest today. Her name is Sarah Joy Kane. I was put into contact with her through a a past guest, uh, Robert Peter Paul, who was in our uh, Thanksgiving episode, and he is the host of the Art of Kindness podcast. My conversation with Sarah just had us both laughing and smiling so much that our, our faces were sore by the end of the interview. She was an actress in New York City and uh, is a tremendous singer and a very positive presence on social media. Her husband has just recently joined the military, so they have moved to Virginia, and uh, her life has completely changed from what it used to be. So we talk a bit about that and how we can help support our families that have uh, family members in the military, who uh, spouses who may be alone this Christmas time, with uh, perhaps even with kids. That can be a very hard time of year for them. But first, I want to share uh, a listener memory with you. And uh, this is from a listener named uh, Mika. I'm just floored by this email I got. Mika writes, I have been listening to your podcast for just over a year now, and I love it and listen to all episodes as soon as they come out. Ah, So you're the one who's been downloading all summer. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Uh, But Mika goes goes on to say, I got into Christmas podcasts last year as I am a New Zealander living in Germany and I was struggling to get into the festive spirit as I wasn't able to go home to my family and the podcasts have definitely become a staple for me year round. I love this time of year because it means we get to come together, remember the things and people we are grateful for and see the magic in the small moments. And I absolutely love being cozy. I really enjoy writing and playing music, and it has become a tradition for me to write a new song celebrating whatever strikes me that season, and it's a really wonderful way for me to snapshot that moment in time. I thought maybe this might be a nice Christmas memory to share with you, and so here I am writing you this email. I have attached the song from this year or two if you want to take a listen. It's about the act of choosing to make light in the darkness, and in doing so, finding each other and celebrating and getting through the winter months together. Thank you so much for such a cozy and joyful podcast, and I can't wait to keep listening. Take care, and Merry Christmas. So thank you, Mika. So I'm going to, I got permission from Mika to play this song for you uh, on the podcast, so I'm going to do that here in a minute. It is a beautiful song. The, The message of it in the chorus, it says, tells us to light up the night. That's a phrase that means a lot to me. Boy, just everything I've been going through this last year or two as, you know, I, maybe I'm just going through a midlife crisis here. It's probably the case, but, you know, just thinking about things and evaluating your life and am I doing what I enjoy doing and what I meant to be doing and, what does that look like for me? You know, all these these big decisions, big, big things that, big changes in my life with my kids getting older, all, all that stuff that I've talked about ad nauseum. <laughs> but, you know, for me, it keeps coming back to no matter who we are, no matter what we believe, we need the light. And if, and if that's you and you find yourself searching for something, I, I hope this song will help you and remind you that truly we will get through this all together. And and so Mika, I appreciate you so much reaching out to me with this song you wrote. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, so without any further ado, let's listen to Light Up by Mika Jean. Steps get heavy 
believe there's something in the air A hint of wonder and a wisp of despair And grey skies tuck us in See what I mean? Wasn't that beautiful? It tells a beautiful story. It, it it's beautifully written. It's beautifully sung, and I'm I'm just overwhelmed by this song. I'm gonna go lay down until I feel better emotionally. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, enjoy uh, this interview with Sarah Joy Kane. I have a very special guest on our episode today. Her name is Sarah Joy Kane, and I met her through a mutual podcasting acquaintance, and I really came to love her online presence through her social media. <laughs> Robert said that uh, 
you have such a joyful presence on online and that's certainly true. Uh, so Sarah, thank you for coming on the Cozy Christmas Podcast. Oh, all right. Thank you so much for having me. What a fun podcast. Well, I enjoy it. So that's, I guess yeah. that's what matters, right? <laughs> it's an honor to be here. Christmas yeah. is kind of part of my personality some years, I, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like. So I, I'm happy to be here. Good, good. Yeah, it's definitely a part of my personality uh, that might be going overboard some days. I don't know. So <laughs> no, no such thing. We need that that magical Christmas cheer, especially after the last couple of years. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I know I, I, well, I tell the story so much, but everyone knows by now. So if you're sick of hearing this folks, just skip ahead. But this podcast started out of the pandemic last year. It, it just, I needed something cheerful, even though it was June, you know, yeah, sure. just had to go, had to do it. So a little bit of, about who you are, uh, folks might be wondering that you, uh, looks like you had been an actor in New York city, uh, in like musicals and stage plays and things and ended up moving kind of South a bit. So, um, (laughs) go ahead and uh, just introduce yourself and tell folks who you are and what you do. Sure. Uh, well, thank you for that great introduction. Um, my name is Sarah Joy Kane. I grew up in Portland, Oregon, um, just in the suburbs outside of Portland, um, my dad's a pastor, so I grew up singing in church and um, always dreamed of being on Broadway or, or pursuing the arts in some capacity that way, which led me to New York City uh, when I was 20. I had $500 and a suitcase that really is like that age old story. Yeah. Um, and someone on Craigslist, I wouldn't recommend that for everybody, but thankfully I was protected and, and this sweet older woman and I shared uh, one bedroom for about a year. <laughs> um, and then from there, I actually booked a tour that I met my husband on. Um, Art, do you know Schoolhouse Rock Live? Yes. Yeah. Like conjunction, junction. <laughs> <laughs> so out of that tour, um, my husband and I met and were married a few months later and then continued touring for about five years with different shows and companies. And, um, this was, this was 10 years ago. So oof, time flies. <laughs> I'm showing my age, well, yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, but, uh, then we moved back to New York city about five years ago and kind of settled down and started that audition hustle and grind and, and craziness. I was able to do some really fun things and readings and off Broadway shows. Uh, I met Robert in um, a new musical that we got to do together. He was incredible in that show. Mm. And um, yeah, so we've been kind of doing that. And then the pandemic hit, womp, womp. Uh, (laughs) Just like I've heard many people say, and then the pandemic. Yeah. Um, You know, and and it was a hard time. We both lost our jobs, as many people did. We kind of felt like it was time to make a really big change. So my husband and I had had done the acting thing and, and we still love it. It's our passion, but we needed stability. And so we, we kind of felt like God was leading us to military life, which is mm-hmm. woo, a huge change <laughs> from uh, 7 a.m., 6 a.m. auditions to now military life. And we moved here just about two months ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting to kind of get used to that. I joined the spouses club and, and I don't know how it happened, but I'm their um, publicity manager. So (laughs) I do all of their social media and make videos and it's kind of nice to have that creative outlet here. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of catches you up to, um, to where we are here in, in Virginia. Seems like joining the the military, uh, even at you know, I don't know, upper twenties, early thirties. Uh, that might've been, that must've been a change. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it really was. And I, I'm even older, but my husband is in his early thirties and, um, at basic training, he was saying most, most guys are like 18 and right yeah. out of high school. And, and my husband had been a manager at restaurants in New York city and kind of had, you know, that responsibility and, and was mm-hmm. earning a great paycheck. So it was humbling, but he has <laughs> such a great attitude about it. Yeah. Um, and the community has been so great. I wasn't sure what to expect. 
you know, coming right. into a military community, but they've really enveloped us and, and um, yeah. spend a lot of time with them now mm-hmm. as I have in the past two months. And I think that's been really a blessing. Um, my husband yeah. and I were apart for six months while he was in basic training. Um, then he got injured. And, and so there was kind of a delay in getting back together, but mm-hmm. you really realize what you take for granted when you're apart you know, from the person you love most and being together with our dog and our cat again, and our cozy Christmassy home right now is (laughs) is such a blessing. (laughs) I know. I mean, Christmas especially can be hard on families when they're apart. Uh, Do you, um, I I know, I guess it sounds like you're still pretty early in, in your, as a military wife, but have any insight as to, you know, what we can do to um, encourage our, our, our troops, our families that might be separated this, this Christmas time? Oh, that's a great question. Absolutely. I was actually talking with um, the president of our spouses club here the other day. So a lot of these military wives obviously have years and years of experience in, in the military lifestyle and mm-hmm. with their husband or um, significant other or spouse being away for holidays and special occasions and I think an important thing is just to really reach out. Sometimes it, it sounds so simple, but you feel so isolated. Sometimes my husband is actually on, um, he's away right now just for a short stint. So I'm thankful, mm-hmm. but it, the house seems so quiet and so big when, when the person you love is away. So reaching out, even a text or a funny meme or something means so much when someone just cares. Like they, they show that they're there and they're thinking Mm -hmm. about you. That goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Um, also some people love like cookies or, or (laughs) a special cocoa or something like that. That's just cozy and comforting. I think those things are underestimated too, that if a neighbor brought me cookies when they knew that I was kind of alone or having a rough time, that would mean a lot. Um, there's other, uh, ways too to kind of support military financially. Sometimes, you know, there there are military families that still really struggle. We're we're provided housing and such, but you can also um, donate to the USO. That's a great way. Purple Heart Homes is a really great, a, a great thing that people are able to donate to. And Camp Coral is for children of military and folks. And it's a camp that just really envelops the kids and feeling special and, and appreciated and seen, especially when sometimes uh, a spouse is away, the, the other spouse is, is down, is struggling, and it's hard for them to kind of give to their child the way that they might need yeah. at that time. So for other people to really be able to give and, and encourage um, Camp Coral is a great place. And then the Wounded Warrior Project. Um, these are mm-hmm. these are awesome things that the Spouses Club president here uh, <laughs> mentioned that I should share. So okay. I look forward to getting to know these more too as I continue my military wife career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I you know, I've never been apart from my wife for more than maybe a week, if that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm really grateful for that because I just kind of fall pe- fall to pieces when she's gone. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, it, it's not that, you know, she does everything around here, but it, it's that, you know, this is my partner and I I feel like I missing an arm or a leg or something. And <laughs> oh, it's yeah. so true, isn't it? And you realize yeah. like how, how much richer they make life, even watching Hallmark movies together, even though begrudgingly, he would rather be watching football. <laughs> um, just the little things, having Taco Tuesday, we do Taco Tuesday every night. I think we've oh, started fine. to establish these things more so that we have memories when he's away. Yeah. That we yeah. can look back on. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have, uh, uh, we have pizza night on Sunday <laughs> evening. We, we put the oh, kids to I bed. Oh, I love it. Yeah, we put the kids to bed and then uh, have have pizza and watch a movie or a TV show or something and and just kind of unwind. So <laughs> those are those small moments I'm realizing are the really powerful moments, aren't they? The ones that matter. Yeah, yeah definitely. And especially you know at Christmas time, it it seems like we're fighting for that time to. Yeah. Uh, it's a time of year I the most I want to just sit and relax, but it seems like it's the busiest time. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so true. It always is that that struggle, isn't it? Every year I'm yep. trying. Have you found anything that kind of helps you balance it more? <laughs> Not really. Just, <laughs> just being um, intentional, which is a buzzword, mm-hmm. I know, but it it carries yeah. a lot of truth that my wife and I have said, okay, uh, we're going to have a date, you know, on, on this night uh, every week or once a month, it's going to be this date or um, I'm going to deliberately, um, well, I did this just last night. I, my wife had gone to bed and my kids were in bed. So I'm like, okay, so I get in my chair, got a blanket on me, got a cup of eggnog, you know, the Christmas tree is on and I was just <laughs> reading some Christmas stories just to unwind, you know, and just to yeah. try to uh, refill my energy. <laughs> and it was lovely. I had a lovely time, stayed up yeah. too late, but <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that's well, necessary though, for that right, right. <laughs> refilling of your tank. That's, that's yeah. Great. That's a good tip. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you know, when, especially when you're, I don't know if you have any kids uh, at, at home or we not. We just but... have, um, fur children, okay. a dog and a cat, but they are very much our kids. They're pretty yes. spoiled. <laughs> good. <laughs> good, good. Uh, but yeah, I know, um, uh, just experiencing even my sister-in-law when her husband's been deployed, mm. uh, you know, she's left really alone with, they have six kids. Oh, uh, wow. A, a handful. Oh, bless her. What an amazing, <laughs> strong woman. Yes. <laughs> yes, she is. She is. Um, and I don't know if she listens or not, but <laughs> she'll appreciate mm. you saying that. Please um, tell her. Yes, she does it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she, uh, you know, it's that. I have to take care of these kids and there's that sometimes we can get caught up in that and then not Mm. refill ourselves. And because we're always giving and that those are important to find those moments. And uh, I desperately need to learn how to do that better. So (laughs) I bet it sounds like you're a pretty giving empathetic person just from talking to you. So trying, trying. (laughs) (laughs) but that's a good tip to fill your own tank so that you can really give and and be there for people during the season. Yeah. Now the next time I get too stressed or overworked, my wife is going to remind me that I just said this, that (laughs) (laughs) that's one (laughs) <laughs> That's one thing about having a podcast, right? She got the receipts because she That's can right. hear. <laughs> I do know she does listen, so <laughs> she's going to remind me of this. So, <laughs> <laughs> moving down to Virginia, uh, you know, as you said, you were uh, an, act, an actor and and involved in different things like that. How how has that changed for you? I know, like New York City seems to be the hub of you know theater and musicals, but. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about where Virginia plays and all that. (laughs) (laughs) That is, oh, that's a wonderful question. And one that I had asked myself really before even leaving, I I love the city. I love the hustle and all the opportunities performance wise. And, but at the same time, I think I was really burnt out. It had Mm -hmm. been, you know, almost five years of like, hustling and really feeling almost like Sarah was a product trying Mm -hmm. to kind of sell my personality and who I am. And then not just feeling like a human being seen. And for the first time coming down here, I feel like people aren't like, can she do a triple? How is her range? You know, (laughs) I feel like, and not that everyone's like that in New York, but there was so much competition that I finally feel like I'm a human. And maybe that's where a lot of the contentment is coming from people are seeing Sarah Joy for like who she is aside from the performer and a human first. Mm -hmm. And so I think, well, I kind of went on a little tangent, but to (laughs) answer that question, um, coming down here, I didn't want to lose the artistic side of me because although I was burnt out, that that is a passion and and a gifting I believe God gave me to, Mm -hmm to um, tell stories and to encourage other people through song and through comedy. And so um, I've, I've been able to continue doing that um, with videos and with voiceover work, which is great that we live in a world where things can be done more remotely. I don't have to be in New York city to submit for certain things or, or to create content. So in that way, I'm, I'm hoping, and I'm still learning. It's been a couple months. I'm, still learning how to not lose that part of me down here where there is a small community theater I'd love to get involved in. So Mm -hmm. in the new year, I'm hoping to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Just be able to, to keep creating and 
and not lose that. Being involved with uh, community theater is is a ton of fun. Yeah, have you done it too? Um, not me personally, but my my wife and kids did this summer. Uh, oh, great. And and my wife has off and on. Um, my son, oldest son, and mm-hmm. again, these are all repeat stories. Sorry, listeners. But... <laughs> I haven't heard them. So <laughs> okay, yeah, me. she hasn't heard them, so <laughs> just bear with us. Uh, yeah, my oldest son really got into. Uh, musical theater in high school we didn't even know he could sing and then (laughs) like 10th grade he 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 lands the part of horton in in the susical the musical and we're like you're gonna have to sing you you know that right and and he's like oh it's fine it's fine and sure enough he starts singing and and we're like where did this kid get that talent from wow that's awesome surprise (laughs) yeah oh that's so cool yeah uh and, and he really just found his I mean, doing theater, uh, I saw this in his life as well as a lot of the kids he he participated in. It gave them a community to be a part of. Uh, yeah. they, they all became mm-hmm. tight friends. It really helped him figure out what he wanted to do with his life. And I think that's just a wonderful uh, community if you can find it. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think that all the time. Peter and I, um, my husband, we toured with Missoula Children's Theater for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And um, what that is, is teams of two actors. So my husband and I, and you go to a new city every week and cast up to 65 kids in a show. And in a week's time, you uh, teach the show. There's costumes, makeup, a set, and you perform it. And we were able to go overseas and do that too. Mm. Um, but all that to say, we know not everyone's going to be an actor or want to be an actor, but it's giving kids confidence, community, like you said, and experience for them to try new things they haven't. And, and the growth that we saw in some of those children in a week was so satisfying and like mind blowing. So Mm -hmm. I think that theater is not just for those who want to be, you know, professional actors, but it's such an important thing in schools and and communities. So I'm so glad your son had that experience, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. And my, I have three kids and then my uh, uh, middle son and then a a, a daughter, my daughter, Grace, Uh, she's she's in seventh grade. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But uh, even he, he likes, my middle son is very much an introvert and, um, hmm. you know, all that, but he's had some opportunities to do some plays and things. And he just comes out of his shell. Like, wow. <laughs> isn't that cool to see them transform on stage? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I, I know this isn't original with me, but y- you know, the schools have the, the STEM program and I can't remember what all the acrostics stand for, but it's like science technology. Oh yeah. Something. Yes. Somebody suggested we need to put an A in there for arts. You know, for, yes. you know, make it make it steam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I absolutely support that 120%. Yeah. Steam even sounds cooler. Like steam, I got <laughs> and then you get like I, I I picture, you know, like the steam locomotives just charging down the track, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Here comes the art. Oh, I love that idea. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh just things like you know creativity uh well every, arts covers everything you know from plays and acting yeah. singing music drawing all that stuff and it, it it's such a vital i think a vital part of making us a good people is to have that mm-hmm. creative uh creative outlet to um uh to express it i mean i i've I've said, so I might get a little um theological here but <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> You know, I think when we create, uh, maybe that's in a way that we become most like, most like God in that sense. I know it sounds kind of weird, but uh, bear with me here. Uh, <laughs> that we view God as the creator, and so what do we then do is to go out and create ourselves. And whether that's you know singing, playing music, drawing, mm-hmm. it's a way that we. See, I don't know what what the right even word is here yet, but it, it's. These are my thoughts in process, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. it it's, uh, it, it's just like, um, you know, a, a child em- emulating their parents. That's kind of how mm. we walk in our in our father's footsteps. Create like he did, and absolutely, Art. That was so well said, and I think Jesus was the best storyteller. So for us to be able to storytell 
you know, through yeah. art or dance or visually or absolutely. So what a gift. And that's, I, I think what's neat about Christmas too, is, you know, Jesus as being such a powerful storyteller yeah. uh, that even the story of Christmas itself is so powerful. You know, that the whole message behind it of a uh, message of hope and a message of yes. redemption yeah. and <laughs> all that. It, it's just powerful storytelling. I think I think that's why this time of year is so special. It's there is such a hope and such a joy in the yeah. world. I love when it's all of the um the the incredible Christmas music or carols so worshipful. And I love that mm-hmm. it's flooding uh, streets sometimes and flooding malls and there's such a joy and a lightness. Boy, we, 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 we're covering all the topics here today. <laughs> I love it. Like <laughs> zoom, zoom, great. zoom. Yeah. Perfect. I'm, I'm honestly starting, starting to look at these interviews as kind of therapy for me, you know, just yeah. get, get all the words out that I'm thinking. And <laughs> I feel that I, it's so nice to like talk with another human being too. And yeah. understand. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Last year was really kind of funny because we we had a lot of quarantine time last year and then uh, we all had COVID um, too, kind of later in the fall. So just a lot of time home alone. And fortunately mm-hmm. I like my family, but uh, <laughs> I, I'd get people on the, on, you know, to do an interview and it's just like, don't go yet. <laughs> I need to talk to someone. Human interaction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gonna... We realized too how much we took it for granted. I think yeah. it was nice for like a week or two to be like, oh, yeah. no people. And then I don't know about you, but I started to really miss like being out and with people and doing. And I, I'm an introvert. Even that was getting hard for me and, and my middle <laughs> son. We're both very much introverts. And when when we're starting to miss people, you know it must be bad. So. <laughs> then you know it. <laughs> gotten bad. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So what, what plans do you have for Christmas this year? Well, this year, my husband and I are just going to have a really cozy Christmas. Um, just the two of us, which is kind of a rarity for us. We usually go to, um, his parents or, um, I'll go to Oregon So we just determined we went to his sister's for Thanksgiving, which was wonderful, Mm -hmm. but we figured we really wanted this time after being apart over half the year this year that we really just wanted it to be us. That might sound kind of selfish, but we love our families and we will FaceTime them on Christmas and share in some of the joy, but we just want to be the two of us Mm -hmm. and stay in our pajamas all day, watch Christmas movies. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. how about you what are you guys up to um actually it's gonna be pretty much the same yeah uh we uh we had plans for my wife's folks to come up but they had to change plans for uh, a wedding in the family so oh, okay okay but so they came up for thanksgiving uh so we got to see oh, them nice. uh but then so yeah this year we're just gonna kind of stay home and relax and um wear those christmas Jamie. <laughs> that sounds perfect. That sounds like a magical Christmas. Yep. Yep. We got a, a stack of Christmas movies to get through. So <laughs> well, what art, what is your favorite Christmas movie? Do you have one? I do. It it changes sometimes. Uh, but I I really like uh the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. And then uh Elf. Oh yes, yes. Boy, then it really gets hard. Um, <laughs> I, I like the Muppets Christmas Carol. Oh, that's so good. You have some great. Yeah, these are good. I support all these choices. Oh, good, good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there. Uh, we like. Oh, um, I like Jim Carrey's Grinch movie. Oh, God, uh, he's so good. He's so funny. <laughs> yeah, and we we like we like that version. My whole family does, and then. Uh, we also like the new animated version that came out just a couple years ago with Benedict Cumberbatch. I didn't see that one. Is it? It's pretty oh, good. It's really good. You it's, have to see it. It's like Jim Carrey's version. It can be really sarcastic, and this mm-hmm. one has some of that, but it's it's more sweet. Uh, and oh, my daughter especially yeah. really likes that one because uh, she she hates it when the Grinch acts mean and. <laughs> And in, the, in this one, he's actually a pretty nice character through most of it. I don't know. It's, it's different. 
it's, yeah. it's worth it. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but th- those are kind of our handful of favorites we, we have to see. Um, actually, tonight, uh, I'm going to get excited here, but uh, tonight we're, <laughs> we're going to, uh, there's a movie theater in Omaha that is showing Elf on the big screen. And so we got, we got tickets to go see that tonight. So, Oh, that's going to be so much fun. So like big and blown yep. up to yep. see that joy. Um, yeah. It's like a, a, I think they're calling it like a elf party or something, but there's going to be games there too. And it's, it's, I don't know all that's going to happen. But it's, all right. Are you going to dress up all Christmassy? Because I feel like that's an, a must. Yes. Yeah. I have okay, a, a new sweatshirt I got this year. It <laughs> says world's tallest elf on it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Okay, good, good. You're covered for tonight. I'm going to be decked out. Yep. <laughs> if, my, <laughs> if my kids aren't embarrassed by me, then I did something wrong. So <laughs> yes, I heard that. Absolutely. You're doing yeah. well. All right. <laughs> uh, how about you? Do you have uh, favorite movies? Elf, definitely. Mm-hmm. And then the 5,462 Hallmark movies that are all the <laughs> same plot, as we uh-huh. said, I just, I can't get enough. Every Christmas I have my checklist, the Hallmark checklist, and I make sure that I yeah. watch every single one. Yeah, I think, I think Hallmark takes the cake, but Elf is so fun. Also, my dad looks like Will Ferrell, so mm. it's really <laughs> funny to watch. <laughs> oh, that's, that's hilarious. Yeah, I have not seen a lot of Hallmark movies uh, and it could be just because there's so many i don't even know where to start (laughs) it's overwhelming yeah i had a guest on a couple months ago now that she she's a big hallmark fan too and so she was kind of giving me some advice on how to how to get started and some movies to to start with but uh i i just one of those things where i gotta make time for it you know (laughs) i gotta make the time for it yeah you have to like well, at least my husband, you have to be in the mood. He can't just, otherwise he doesn't appreciate the cheese that is Hallmark movies. Oh, so I, I love it. Well, <laughs> bouncing off what you said earlier, I, I'd rather watch Hallmark than a football game. So <laughs> Yay! your wife must be so happy. <laughs> Although she might, she might rather watch football than a Hallmark. I don't know. Oh, no. You might have a split to rue from what we yeah. have. No, I think I think she'd be up for uh, Hallmark too. So <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I wanted to try something new today, and and I want to play a game here. Okay. And I uh, we're gonna do uh, a Christmas version of Would You Rather. Um, <laughs> okay. So in case we haven't laughed enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I, my cheeks hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's always a good good sign. <laughs> Uh, my daughter and I have done this. She sometimes comes on the podcast and we've done this before, uh, I think once or twice, and we had a lot of fun. So I, I've been trying to think of some things to do with, with my guests. So you're going to, uh, oh, I'm excited. We're, okay, you're going to be the, t- the test, the test dummy here. So <laughs> the Christmas guinea pig. If you guinea pig. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I found a couple here that really kind of made me chuckle. Uh, so I thought I'd try them out on you. Okay. All right. If you're ready, here we go. Uh, would you rather have to loudly sing the chorus of Jingle Bells every time you walk into a room for a week or have to wear a Santa suit to school every day for a week? Oh, well, I already <laughs> walk into rooms singing Jingle Bells. So I feel like that one is A-OK for me. I would there you do go. that. <laughs> uh, that yeah, you know, I probably do the same thing. So, <laughs> uh, but although I might like to wear the Santa suit for a week, you know, just uh, honestly, enough people know me by now, they probably wouldn't even bat an eye. Like, oh yeah, there's that's right. true, he's, and he's you'd be crazy. comfortable all yeah. day, so <laughs> can't beat comfort. That's true. Yep, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, would you rather? And this one, okay, this one really made me laugh because I joke about this all the time. Would you rather eat your cereal with eggnog instead of milk? Or eat a candy cane sandwich. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, all right. This is a hard one. Right? <laughs> so I think I would go with a cereal with eggnog because sometimes candy canes hurt my teeth. I've eaten so many over the years. <laughs> if I had a sandwich where I had the straight crunch, I feel like mm. that might be injuring to my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> right. How about you? Uh, I'd probably pick the same. Yeah. Eat cereal. <laughs> Although 
I'm trying to imagine, you know, like bran flakes with eggnog. That might not, <laughs> that might not oh work. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that will work <laughs> but i i love candy canes but uh yeah chewing those would be would be hard i think yeah, yeah. they're hard they're so hard <laughs> besides i mean what would say christmas more than sitting down with a big bowl of like frosted flakes and full of eggnog and <laughs> delicious <great sugar. laughs> that's right uh, i'm just eating a bowl of sugar i think <laughs> <laughs> That's, I think that's how I'm going to spend Christmas morning now. <laughs> you would have the energy of like a four-year-old for a few hours. <laughs> uh, I would crash very hard. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, uh, would you rather have Frosty the Snowman for a friend or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer for a friend? Oh gosh, Frosty is so chill and he has like boom, 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 like the cool jazzy voice. Yeah. But doesn't he go away for most of the year? Well, he does disappear at the like, end of the song. Yeah. I feel hmm. like that would be a fair weather friendship. Like he'd come around every once in a while to hang and then <laughs> melt. <laughs> so I'd say Rudolph. Okay. Plus he could fly me places. Oh, there you go. Yeah. How about so now, you? I, I might change my answer now. I was going to say frosty because I like <laughs> I like snow, but you know, here it's supposed to be cold right now, but we're in the, the temperatures in the 50s. And oh, next wow. week it's going to get up to 70 degrees, which is unheard what? of. So my my good friend Frosty, he's not gonna be able to come. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be oh. like <laughs> out of he's here. Gonna be a, he's gonna be oh, a puddle. No. <laughs> Man, that's so crazy. This weather, like we're in December, get it together weather. I mean, we're in Iowa. Usually they get snow in winter. It, it does tend to come more in January, but still that's, are that's you, really warm. Are you close to Nebraska? Is that what I heard you say? You're close, like pretty close that you can drive over. We're about 40 minutes from the Nebraskan border. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and Omaha has all kinds of fun Christmas activities they do. So sometimes oh, we'll, I bet. we'll go down there. Uh, but uh, yeah, we haven't been last couple of years. They have a, a big like Christmas light celebration, you know, where they turn on all the city Christmas lights and everything. That's oh. that was always fun to go to. Uh, I always wonder are the the electrical bills in some of these cities. Yeah. I appreciate it so much, but can you imagine they keep them on <laughs> for like days <laughs> and weeks? Yeah. Whoa, they must budget for that. <laughs> they, they must. Yeah. Or either, either that or we end up paying for it. I don't know. <laughs> I think you're right. I think that's more logical. Yeah. <laughs> colors at work. Well, I'd rather them go to that. So <laughs> that's, Cheers. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then uh, where, where am I here? Uh, okay. Um, so speaking of Rudolph, would you rather have a nose that glows red like Rudolph's or have pointy ears like an elf? Oh, this is a good one. I'm actually so torn. Hmm. I feel like for utilitarian purposes, a glowing nose in the dark would be helpful. So I'm going to go with the glowing nose as opposed to pokey ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to go with ears. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I want to be an elf. So <laughs> Would you get them pierced? pierced? Oh, oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> that might hurt. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm kind of a weakling when it comes to being poked. So, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Here's one that hopefully might make us both look good. Here, uh, okay. Would you rather be given a hundred dollars for Christmas to buy things for yourself, or be given a thousand dollars before Christmas to use to buy gifts for other people? Uh, it sounds so cheesy and cliche, but for sure I'd give it away. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It would feel so much better, really. Well, <laughs> I was thinking about this question because it does, it sounds cl cliche and cheesy yeah, and all that, like, but, oh, of course. but honestly, I would probably, I'm going to just be honest. If I was a kid, I would probably answer that differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same. I'm sure. But now, you know, I've got a job. If I want something, I just buy it, you know? Yes. <laughs> so. yes. And a thousand dollars. Also, doesn't it feel so good when someone opens a package or like, mm -hmm. I don't know, there's something so satisfying when you see how happy they are with something mm -hmm. you got them. 
Yeah. That feels yeah. so good to me when people are like, oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it being able to help people too. That's just fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's I mean, we've had times in our life where people have been so gracious to us and, mm. um, and helped us out and to be able to then repay that is, is always very fulfilling. So absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're a couple of uh, angels here, aren't we? <laughs> yes, duh, everybody else get in line. That's right. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've, we've, uh, we're setting the standard here. <laughs> Well, so I almost did add that question, but I, I I was curious how how to answer that. So no, I love. It. I think that's a great question. There's there's such a gift in giving a gift. Like it sounds cheesy, but it's so true. I, I really yep. and the older I've gotten too, you might agree. Like mm-hmm. yes, when we were younger, it would be more focused on us. But there's such a like satisfaction in giving and and doing for others as I've gotten older. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. My family and and my my in laws especially they like to tease me about how much I like Christmas and <laughs> you know they they kind of consider me as the extra kid in the house. And <laughs> it's, Good. It, you know, like oh, we have to have presents or Art will be disappointed. And <laughs> it's fine. I'm a, I'm an adult. I can handle it if I don't. <laughs> lose that childlike joy, right? I think that's so powerful. That's great. That's right. But I, uh, however, I'm not going to say no to a present. So yeah. <laughs> yes, husband, this does not mean I don't want presents for Christmas. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. So if you want, I got a Christmas list. It's uh, uh yeah, <laughs> got a wish list. And your Amazon wish list. Yes. Yep. You can reach it. At... <laughs> that's right. I'll have a link in the show notes to my, uh, <laughs> Can you put mine in there too, please? Oh, you know, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have a job wrapping presents at the mall or have a job taking pictures of children sitting on Santa's lap at the mall? So I just was wrapping presents with the spouses club last week at our exchange, which is like the mall. Mm-hmm. That was kind of boring. So, I mean, it was great when people would stop by, but I think the constant flow of children and like things happening and the funny, like pulling of a beard on Santa would be more entertaining. So I probably mm. want to take pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Do? Me too. Yeah. I, I hate wrapping presents. <laughs> Are you pretty bad? I, I'm, if I take the time, I can get it to look sort of okay, but I feel like <laughs> I'm just all thumbs. The tape is sticking everywhere, but on the paper. No, <laughs> how many of yours are? I just want it to be done, and in fact, I would pay somebody to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if you're in Virginia, you could stop by, and we'll wrap them for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's some. My wife and I will wrap presents here and there throughout the season, but we tend to just because probably because we're busy, we wait until Christmas Eve to wrap a lot of them and. So we, we're up late Christmas Eve. We're wrapping presents, getting everything ready. And <laughs> it's like, uh, I just want this to be Every fine. year. Yep. <laughs> Next year, we're going to do this earlier, right? Of course. <laughs> it never happens. It never gets earlier. <laughs> nope. <laughs> never. But now my, uh, my sister, she loves Christmas quite a bit. <laughs> and she loves to wrap. And she will wrap a present and it will look like, I mean, better than anything like Martha Stewart or someone could do. I, and wow. all, the, all the paper is aligned. So the print and pattern are just right. And oh my goodness, it's like a work of art. So <laughs> oh, that's so funny that some people have that like gifting of precision and patience yeah. that we don't have. I, I think she calls it OCD though. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. That track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's told me before that her dream job would be to wrap presents at the mall, you know, <laughs> like, like, wow, wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you do you, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, here's a present I wrapped. It looks like it's just gone through a minefield or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> crushed to death. Poor thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Would you rather be one of Santa's elves or be one of Santa's reindeer? Ooh, elves. I feel like the reindeer probably get so cold rushing through the snow every Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. Don't you think the elves get hot cocoa and candy? What do you think? I think so. Uh, Being an elf, I think would be the ideal there. I mean, you did mention that you wanted to be an elf. I did. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, as a reindeer, you got to go with Santa. 
Um, yeah. But I don't know, living at the North Pole all year, that'd be fun. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the reindeer do get to see the actual like fruition, like it come to fruition and the gifts mm-hmm. being left. But I don't know that. Oh, also how tiring to go around the whole world and like <laughs> flying over. I don't know. I guess elf, definitely. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> a little safer on Christmas Eve anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Visions of Santa being shot at. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you go fly it over a war zone or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh no, no. It just took a turn for the dark. This, yeah, this got dark. Yeah. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> it did. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, I think. I'll say that you won that game. So good job. <laughs> All right. I felt like it was a solid tie, but I will take sure. the win if okay. I have to. <laughs> uh, I think it's safe to say that we're both losers. I don't know. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, yes, that's actually more prepared. Yeah. That was a really fun game. I've never that played a game like that. Some of those some of those questions were like, ooh, touch and go. I couldn't decide, but as a family, we've played it before. There was somewhere we were eating out once that had it as a, like a table game or something. Oh, like, this is I a love lot of that. Fun. It always gets us talking about stuff, but there's always that question that makes my brain freeze. Like, oh no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Both yeah, choices are awful. Really... <laughs> oh, I love that you guys do that as a family. And do you have any games you play on Christmas or like tradition that you do? Actually, yeah, we have, um, one one game especially uh it's uh christmasopoly it's it's like a christmas version of monopoly oh cool and it's so fun you know it's still the basic premise of monopoly where you you buy things and and rent and build instead of building okay. houses you build um you build presents and christmas trees maybe we're weird but for the most part we can play monopoly without it turning into a huge fight you guys are weird. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think it's the Christmas Opoly that we can play without fighting. Just, I don't know. It's just so cheerful. It's such a cheerful game. Maybe that helps, but oh, we love, that. we love to play that. My dad got that for us a couple of years ago and it's just become a, a big favorite. Uh, we tend to play it whenever kind of anytime during the year we, we need a little Christmas. So <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I, I didn't know that was a game. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where he got it, but it's it's a blast and all the different token characters are, are yeah. different christmas related things you know i, I like to play oh, cool. the um scrooge um character and <laughs> you always choose the Scrooge. <laughs> there's yeah. no elf in this one <laughs> um no i don't think no there's no there's like a, a reindeer uh a lump of coal um <laughs> Who usually gets that one? <laughs> I, I try to give it to one of my kids, but they don't, they don't buy it. So, <laughs> okay. but yeah, uh, that that's a fun game. We play, we like to bake cookies. Oh yeah. That big cookie baking time is coming up here soon. So that's do you decorate fun. with icing? Are you a good decorator of cookies? Um, I'm a good eater of cookies <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah. That's very honest. <laughs> My my wife does a lot of the the baking. Uh, I've started doing some this past year. It's kind of kind of grew out of the podcast. I had some people kind of recommend um, recipes, and I thought, oh, I'm going to try this. Oh, and, that's great! And yeah, so I made something. Had a, a a guest on. She had written a story about uh, it's kind of a Christmas fable. Turtle chocolate brownies pay, played <gasps> a, a big part in the in the story. So she sent me the recipe and I made it and it turned out really good. So Oh, that sounds incredible. Oh, I'm so hungry now. <laughs> now, do, do you bake? Because I can send you the recipe. It's really yes, good. Yes, please do. <laughs> okay. Please. Yeah, I, I love to decorate Christmas cookies. And I found on Instagram recently this um, kind of creative brownie recipe where you make brownies and then you cut them into trees mm-hmm. and then you use um, candy canes for the like, trunk Mm -hmm. and then tons of frosting and red and green um sorry my dog was just having a moment so i don't know if you heard that no that's Um, fine and so you decorate with like red and green m&ms oh so Mm. good Mm. but i would love to try your recipe yeah i put chocolate chips in it as well Mm. and 
this last time I made them last week, uh, my wife had picked up some like uh, espresso flavored uh, chocolate chips. Now, oh, wow. I, I didn't think that those brownies could get better, but they did. So. <laughs> oh, that sounds incredible. Yes. Yeah. I will have to try them and I'll let you know how they turn out. Hopefully, oh, I, hopefully as good as yours. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send, I'll send the recipe. Um, yeah. And then uh, my wife likes, she has so many she makes. And so a couple of years ago, we kind of said, okay, we can't, we can't keep eating all these or we're going to be, you know, rolling yeah. out the door. So. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, uh, but she makes um, uh, the, oh, there's I can't even think of them all now. It's it's like going to a an all you can eat buffet and when you're starving. It's like oh, where to start? You know. <laughs> <laughs> it is so hard. But yeah, so we'll we'll make a lot of cookies, but then we'll uh, make plates for people. Uh, you know, we know some shut ins and oh, folks who can't great. get out and that's there, great. There's a retirement home just up the street from us. And we know some people there. And um, mm. so we'll bring them some Christmas cookies. And half the time they're like, oh, come in and eat that with us right now. <laughs> oh, because they want that human interaction. Like you're talking about. Yeah. I love that you do that. Just a simple thing like cookies this time of year. Mm-hmm. It's really a special gift. Well, that's that's all my wife's idea. So I, I'd be home eating them all myself. But <laughs> <laughs> she, make, well, she makes I'm- me share. <laughs> She would definitely choose the gift a thousand dollar gifts to people instead of a hundred for herself. It oh, sounds yeah. Like. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, now, do you have any um, uh, like a, a favorite Christmas memory or tradition? So growing up every year until I moved out before we could open presents, we read um, the Christmas story from the Bible. Mm -hmm. So my dad would always read that to us. And I thought it was special. It kind of got us focused on the importance of, of Jesus during this time of year, at least for us, that was really important. So before we would tear into packages and presents and, you know, all the wonderful materialistic things, just having that heart focus was, was pretty special. And then all day we would just eat sugar, sugar, treats, cookies. My poor parents were probably like, Ooh, slow down. But (laughs) I remember lots of sweets during Christmas. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I love uh, gingerbread cookies. Uh, those are probably, yeah. at least right now, those are my favorite. They don't taste as sweet, I guess, as maybe the sugar yeah. cookie with a, with an inch thick frosting that I, I made. <laughs> <laughs> frosting has a way of um, adding some sweetness. That's so true. You know, you, you had asked about, um, <laughs> Have I frosted them? I, I I do, and more than once my kids have said, "Dad, what is that?" <laughs> <laughs> so it's like oh, it's, a, you know, it's a snowman. <laughs> it's great. They just keep you humble, and yep, they're so <laughs> honest. <laughs> but I uh, my my aunt sent me a picture she found the other day of when I was about six years old, and I was with my grandma in her kitchen making gingerbread cookies. Oh. And, I'm like, oh, I, I don't even remember that, but I guess I've always liked them. So <laughs> that is such a special memory to have and to look back yeah. and see things that are still the same, you know, well, I, I looked closely at how I was decorating this gingerbread cookie and I had pretty much covered the entire surface with M&Ms and, <laughs> and I'm thinking that must taste really gross. <laughs> <laughs> have some, have some cookie with your m and yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh I don't so know. Funny. Uh, I was six. So <laughs> yeah, six. I mean, I, I still kind of do that now. So I feel like I put too many, um, candies on my yeah. cakes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now do you have, uh, is there like a food item that you, you have to make at Christmas time or, or it's not Christmas for you? Um, I know we just talked about it, but probably sugar cookies that are decorated mm-hmm. in like shapes like Santa's face and Christmas trees. And then I also love a really good honey glazed ham. Mm. Like turkey is great at Thanksgiving. And then I'm like, yes, it's ham season when it's um when it's Christmas. Yeah. My, <laughs> How about you? Um kind of the same with that. Uh my when I was growing up, we would have turkey for both Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh, okay. Uh, as okay. far as I remember, anyway. Uh, but then, uh, when I got married, you know, my wife said, "Well, we usually have ham for Christmas." And, <laughs> and I'm thinking, "Well, that's weird. Who would have ham at Christmas?" That's, 
that's Easter, isn't it? <laughs> she said, well, we have it at Easter too. So, Oh, that's so funny. So, so that I, wasn't something you were used to. Yeah. So I, I, I joke with her and say, well, we, we compromise and we have ham. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that sounds great. Uh, honestly, for me, uh, it doesn't matter um, as far as that goes. But on um, Christmas Eve, this is something that her parents started. And then we did once we got married. And they have uh, fondue on Christmas <gasps> Eve. Uh, Ooh. And we do the, um, the with the hot oil and we fry uh, like little bits of steak or chicken. Oh, um, my gosh. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's wow. She'll have some dough out so we can make little fried balls, you know, and yeah. um, sometimes put, I get really creative. Then I'll, I'll, I'll fry up some of the steak or chicken, put that in the middle of the dough ball, put some, <laughs> oh, wow. put some cheese in there, then dunk the whole thing in the oil and have this oh, giant nice. fried ball of nastiness. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious nastiness. Delicious. That yeah. amazing. Yeah. Do oh, you guys it, do the fondue with sweet things as well? Like the chocolate um, fondue or, or it's more no, it's, like it's al- always been the uh yeah the hot, the hot oil the the meat wow stuff. Um, mm. yeah in fact i i didn't realize you could do chocolate like that too <laughs> oh really for, yeah <laughs> i was uncultured i don't know <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, that's great i went to melting pot this is mm. not an ad for melting pot, but my husband right. took me there for my birthday and um it's so cool i thought you could only do chocolate with strawberries and things you Mm -hmm. dip but like you were saying we had like fish and steak and different things with Mm -hmm. the oil and cheese oh so good that's a great tradition oh it's yeah we we love it and we have um you know it's once we get the kids to bed we get you know the presents are either all wrapped or we're feeling (laughs) let's let's just wait yeah (laughs) yeah we'll just stuff ourselves full of greasy little bits of meat and um (laughs) I don't know why her parents started doing it when they, they started doing it when they got married and they just kind of Mm. passed the tradition on to us. And we've talked about having the kids join us when they got older, because you know, when they're four and five year old, we don't want them dealing with. Oh yeah. That can be dangerous. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I've kind of been a Grinch about it, but I'm like, this is just really fun. Just the two of us. So (laughs) Let's there is nothing wrong with holding on to that for just you two for for a yeah. while longer or however long you want. Let's just let's just not. I don't know. <laughs> but um now that well, one of my like my oldest, he's in college now. So I don't know if that'll change. Oh, wow. If we'll we'll invite him to the, the sacred fondue time. But <laughs> <laughs> oh how old are your kids? Um he's uh he's actually turning 19 in three days. Wow. Um, so he's just started his first year. He's in music education. Oh, cool. uh, it's going to be a music teacher. Um, That's great. And then my uh, second son is 17. He's in 11th grade. And I think his dream job would be to never leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> just work remotely. And- <laughs> there you go. He has, he has a, a pet turtle. And uh, it's funny because the they're both their personalities are very similar. It's just, <laughs> oh, someone's coming. Nope. <laughs> you know? That sounds great. Oh, uh, and then my daughter, she's, um, oh, oh, I'm in trouble. No, she's 12. Uh, and she's oh, in wow. seventh grade. So yeah, she's, um, in fact, I, I actually got to leave here soon to go pick her up from school, but. <laughs> oh, yes, that sounds important. I think it's so cool how siblings can have such different personalities too. I, I'm one of yeah. three and we're okay. so different and it sounds like maybe your, your children are too. Yeah. Um, my oldest and youngest are probably more similar, just very okay. outgoing, very, uh, I say, don't take this the wrong way. Very talented, you know, <laughs> my poor son he's like i'm talented too <laughs> but you know what i mean it's just like Aww. they're uh they have a lot of uh, mm. uh outward talent kind of thing with like singing sure. and music sure, and all that mm-hmm. and my uh so we had this bright idea that my son my oldest would teach our daughter uh piano because he was taking piano he was oh. he's, he's really good pianist 
And, you know, he wanted to get some experience teaching music. So we had this bright idea to have him teach his sister how to play piano. What yeah. could possibly go wrong with that? Oh, no. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. It You're was, so it was just, everyone suffered, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, and, but after all of that, after all mm. that drama she put him through, he, he still wants to be a music teacher and, Okay, that's good sign. Yep, I said if you can survive teaching Gracie piano, you can do anything. So, <laughs> did she end up learning um, how to play? Or yeah, yeah, a little okay. bit. She she took lessons for about half a year, but she really just wasn't enjoying it, and yeah. he was he was frustrated because she wouldn't do anything he said because she was looking at him. Brother. This is my brother. This isn't my yeah. teacher. You know and it just, it didn't work. Um, but she's uh, very musically gifted with singing. You know, she is playing in the, in the junior high band and everything. And, and Oh, that's great. But we I wanted her that. to at least have a basis in music with piano. It's, you know, it's just, that's great. My middle son, you know, he loves to, um, he's really into computer games and computers. Mm. He, he likes to write. He's a good writer. Oh, um, see, everyone has different yeah. gifting. I've really learned yeah. that. That's so cool that he has that bent, you know, yeah. toward... a lot of uh, more, he and I share a lot of the same tastes and talents and things. So it's a lot of more as an introvert, you know, the, the yeah. kind of thing that I do alone. <laughs> so <laughs> that's so cool that you guys yeah. can kind of relate and, and yeah. Yeah. Have, oh, it's so funny. Out. Well, we have uh, our sense of humor is so similar to, well, we'll sometimes say, <laughs> come up with the same joke at the same time or something. <laughs> oh no. My wife just Whereas rolls your her family eyes. family is probably like, uh. <laughs> Well, he, he and I are both middle child, uh, the middle child of our oh, family. Oh, me so. too. Okay, middle cool. Middle child club. All right. <laughs> Completely unrelated. I saw this meme on Facebook once that said, happy middle child appreciation day. And then it said, oh, you didn't know it was middle child appreciation day? There's no surprise. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. I feel like sometimes, yeah, the middle child, I wonder sometimes if that's why I was like pursued singing and like, oh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Aww. Well, um, well, it sounds we ran ramble enough now. Um, but <laughs> that was so fun. Oh, it really. was, it was. Um, so uh I'll 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 have to come up here with a tag to, uh, to leave here, but, <laughs> um, anyway, Sarah, thanks for, uh, coming on the podcast and for bringing us Christmas cheer today. Uh, and, uh, now that we know all, all your secrets about, uh, what from, would you rather we know yeah. <laughs> uh, all, all your, all your uh, Christmas secrets there. So <laughs> absolutely. That was such a fun game and, and just chatting with you is a great time. I haven't laughed so much. My cheeks oh, good. really do hurt. <laughs> Oh, sorry, but I'm not sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing. And All thank right. you for having a, a podcast like this that really celebrates this time of year and, you know, kind of making it a throughout the year thing where yeah. we can bring joy and kindness. And I, I really love that and appreciate that. Well, you're, you're welcome. And <laughs> um, if folks want to find you uh, on, on your social medias, um, I'd love for them to be able to, to uh, find you. Where, where are you at? Absolutely. Um, so I have a website, Sarah Joy Kane, that's Sarah with an H. So Sarah Joy Um, and then on all the socials, so Instagram, TikTok, it's Sarah Joy in the City. I'm no okay. longer in the city, but I decided <laughs> to keep it. So Sarah Joy in the City. All and right. um, yeah, I release new videos and voiceover stuff and um, some holiday projects coming up. So oh, stay fun. tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. I, I just saw today, uh, the couple, you, or there's one, at least you made about, uh, carolers versus <laughs> those who don't want to carol versus those who do. And that just seems real, uh, such true to life uh, oh. stuff there. So <laughs> <laughs> which one are you? Are you, are um, you oh, I, I would be the one who wants to carol. I, I like going. Oh, great. Caroling, okay. But, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, we, we do that sometimes. Uh, our, our family will go out caroling and it's fun. Oh, but, I think that's so special that you guys do that as a family. Well, we, we have a, a couple of 
different of the other side of, of your video you had there. So yeah, <laughs> we have some who don't want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody commented, is there a middle ground for people yeah. that are kind of in the middle? <laughs> And I, I might be more towards the middle just because, <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, th that and a lot, a couple of other videos were just great. Hilarious. Oh, so. Thanks so much, Art. It's, it's nice to be able to create still even outside mm -hmm. of the city. So thank you for yep. saying that. Yep. Uh, the joy of the internet. Anyone can put anything on it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, for better or worse. <laughs> that's right. I was going to say, that's also the horror of the internet. So <laughs> We'll stay on the, the good side. The there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, it, uh, Sarah, I hope you and your husband have a great Christmas this year and uh, really have a, a, a cozy day to relax and, and just spend time with each other. So, uh, thank so, you, Art. Thank you uh, so much. And your family as well. You bet. So, have a Merry Christmas. Thanks. You too. Well, that's it for us today. Keep subscribed so that uh, later this week will come the next part in A Christmas Carol. I'm not quite sure now where we're going to be at in reference to this. I've had a little bit of delays getting the episodes out quite when I wanted to. We got sick again at our house, so things kind of got rearranged and jumbled and pushed back. Uh, but nothing serious at all, just a common cold kicking up our backsides this this month but i hope you all are well uh, i will leave the links to sarah's uh, social media presence in the show notes i really encourage you to go and take and follow her she's just an absolute delight on social media a very positive creative presence that i think the inter internet was intended for be sure to do that that you are kind to each other that you are doing good and that you are being good. <laughs> Santa's watching. And remember that there is nothing in the world so irresistibly contagious as laughter and good humor. Have a very Merry Christmas. <laughs>